We'll be visiting the capital of Madrid and Toledo and Segovia and paying particular attention to Andalucía, the southern part of this beautiful country, starting in Sevilla. Here we are at the Plaza de España. We'll also be visiting the Alcazar and walking through the parks. We'll be enjoying the shopping streets of this great city of Sevilla. And we'll also be visiting Cordoba and Granada in the first half hour of the program. Then in the second half hour, we'll focus more on central Spain, going to Madrid. We'll see the Escorial, Segovia, and we'll end up in Toledo. But we start in the heart of Sevilla. Downtown is a shopper's paradise. It's a largely pedestrian zone. No cars allowed here for many, many square blocks in the heart of Sevilla. And there are some very attractive shops. There's also a lot of most impressive buildings in this great city. You'll find many ceramic murals in the Plaza de España that depict many different provinces of Spain. This grand pavilion was constructed for the 1929 World's Fair and fortunately it's been preserved ever since. There's a beautiful moat in front and you can actually rent rowboats and go for a little spin in this canal. All around you'll find Maria Luisa Park and there's other buildings preserved from that World's Fair that mostly house government ministries nowadays. One of the most exciting building complexes in town is the Alcazar, the ancient royal palace first built by the Muslims, and we'll be taking a walking tour through this palace with a local guide who's going to tell us all about its history and its architectural details. And a bit later in the program, we'll visit the most famous palace in all of Spain, the Alhambra in Granada. For now, let's stroll through the Alcazar. And this is uh, in 14th century built by order of uh, King of Castilla, Peter I. Alcazar, you asked me before, what's Alcazar? It's an Arab word that means palace and fortress. This was chapel and audience room of the uh, former House of the Indias. We have uh, a beautiful painting of the Virgin Maria. She is protecting under her mantle natives of the New World mm -hmm. and also the sailors. Those sailors, like Christopher Columbus, the one on the left side. And uh, it was a private living area for the royal family. The name is the Dolls Courtyard, D-O-L-L-S, the Dolls Courtyard. It's very beautiful. Uh, the decoration among the arches, it looked like lace, hmm? very fine. And uh, columns, are Romans. And you see the skylight now. The ceiling is also from those days and it's uh, mudejar style, beautifully carved, wood carved. On the wall you can see the stucco work which is this uh, made of plaster and marble. Uh, mix up they make a paste which in, in a certain moment is just hard enough to be worked with hammer and chisels, and then making the design that uh, it had been this design before in advance, and then just make the reliefs with the hammer and chisels, and then let them harden up uh, even more later. And it, it had marble. It's very hard, and it lasts for ages. It, as you can see, it's been built uh, around uh, courtyards as the uh, Arab used to, to, to do. Uh, different courtyards with different uh, um, uses. It's called the Apeadero, and it was the carriage's entrance mm -hmm. to the Alcazar. Oh, come in here with the carriage. Is there From there, outside yeah. to the, here, is for the carriages, altar? only for carriages. Oh, and this is an altar, yeah. beautiful baroque. Today we're visiting Sevilla and we're doing a walking tour of the Alcazar and we're about to enter the great cathedral of Sevilla and we're walking along with our local guide Pilar. 
Uh, you will see the main altar. I think now it will be just ready to begin the main mass, uh, the main altar, which is 16th century, an old wood carved covered with gold leaf. It's uh, considered the third largest cathedral in the world if we attend to the length of the naves. St. Peter in Rome has the longest nave, second one St. Paul in London, and third one this cathedral. But if we consider the total surface, square meters built, this is the largest cathedral in the world. Mm -hmm. There you are. And what were the dates of construction? Uh, beginning of uh, 16th century, 1503 exactly, uh, starting to be built. 100 years to build the Gothic part of the church, and then another 100 years to finish the decoration of the altars, chapels, and the chapter rooms. The uh, Giralda is older, though, you know, it's part of the old mosque. It was a minaret, it's made in, built in brick, and it is 12th century, 800 years old. The upper part of the Giralda, the, the, the belfry, is 16th century Renaissance style. The Giralda is the symbol of Sevilla, but the soul of Sevilla is found inside this massive cathedral, the largest church in the world. Incredible. First constructed from the year 1402 in a very late Gothic style. Flamboyant Gothic touches are found here, as well as some early Renaissance touches. But the overall impression is one of vast size and huge soaring pillars. It's almost incongruous to find this Renaissance chapel within the Gothic church. It's somewhat similar to the incongruity that we will find in Cordoba with a Renaissance church inside the old mosque. But here it's within the greatest Gothic cathedral in the world, the largest church in the world, larger than St. Peter's in Rome or St. Paul's in London. You can really feel the immense scale when you compare these huge pillars to these small people. And it's not by accident that man is made to feel tiny and insignificant inside this mammoth church. That's the way the creators wanted it. You also have a fabulous view of the city from the top of the Giralda Tower, and as you're climbing the tower up the comfortable staircase ramps, you have wonderful views of the roof line of the cathedral as well. From the tower, you can see the bull ring, you can see the heart of the old town, you can see some of the modern buildings out on the peripheral edge, but most of all, you see the cathedral, immense and spread out before you. For comparison, all of Westminster Abbey in London would fit in one aisle of the church. And there are five very wide aisles, each the width of a city street. Immense proportions. It's quite an exciting feeling to walk around inside such a vast building. And then it's time to move along and continue with our explorations of Sevilla. You can take a horse and buggy ride around town or you can just hop in a taxi. It's a small city, so you can easily see the entire place, all the important highlights, within a few days. We're spending three days in Sevilla on our tour. This is part of a tour of Spain and Portugal that we've conducted with the Hawaii Geographic Society. And we'll be going back again with a similar tour to the highlights of Spain and Portugal. And we'll certainly return to Sevilla because it gave us such pleasure. And one of the great things to do here is enjoy a flamenco concert. There is a vibrant and passionate flamenco rhythm to the everyday life in the streets of the city of Sevilla. The people have a certain charm, a certain rhythm and savoir faire that makes you realize the roots of flamenco are in the culture of this great city. The name of this club is El Palacio Andaluz, and they put on a fine show. The streets of the city put on a great show as well, and it's always one of the favorite things we like to do in our tours with Hawaii Geographic Society is walk the streets, enjoy some people watching, and take in some of the historic sites, of course. And one of the most impressive sites in Sevilla 
is this formerly private palace called the House of Pilate. It's called that because it's designed after an ancient Roman villa constructed during the 14th and 15th centuries in a mix of styles that combines touches of the Moorish, the Roman, the classical, Russian. as well as Renaissance. This Casa de Pilatus is constructed around a series of internal patios and gardens with little of note visible from the street itself. So it's quite a revelation when you step into the beautiful arcaded loggia that forms the central patio and enjoy the mosaic walls and the fountain courtyards and the beautiful gardens that are scattered all around this palace. You'll find extravagant displays of bougainvilleas and ancient Roman statues and Gothic arches all combined in a marvelous and harmonious blend guided largely by the mudejar elements of the Muslim architecture combined with other styles. The plaster work and the use of ceramics and the unequal dimensions of the arches are Muslim and the gallery balustrades are Gothic and the fountains and the columns and statues and the overall dimensions are Renaissance. So you see elements here of the city of Florence or Morocco, the Marrakesh, and ancient Rome. The pavement was originally tile but has worn out and has been replaced by marble in the 19th century. During its hundreds of years there has been considerable maintenance and reconstruction, but the overall plan remains faithful to the original designs. The house is located on Calle Aguilas, which was once the main street of Sevilla, and at that time was the starting point for the annual Holy Week processions. The patio and its surrounding gardens represents the cool spaciousness of symmetrical design that characterizes the Spanish Renaissance at its best. And fascinating are these touches of ancient Rome, although ironically, there never was a house of Pilatus in Jerusalem. So this was based more on myth and legend than being fabricated from the actual residence of Pilatus. But it makes an interesting story, and ever since the 16th century, it's been called Casa de Pilatus, and that's the official name today. It's a museum, open to the public. You pay a slight admission fee, and it's well worth a visit, for it's an oasis of quiet tranquility. It's nice to get away from the hustle of the city and see some alternative sites. And now we're getting away from the city altogether, on our comfortable train ride, we're traveling through Spain by train. I like Sevilla. Yeah. I just loved it. I'd like to come back. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm still dying to have my paella, though. Next to Cordoba or someplace. Gotta have paella. 